We are in Apache, Oklahoma for the annual Rattlesnake Festival. You excited, Tara? Yeah. Yeah? I am. Are you? Yeah, it should be interesting. We'll go check it out. The Apache Rattlesnake Festival is located in the United States of America, in a small town of the state of Oklahoma, called Apache, that has less than 2,000 residents. The Rattlesnake Festival of 2024 marks their 40th anniversary. This particular Rattlesnake Festival has been going strong for over 30 years, and it is a four-day event, with a whole list of activities and events to participate in from a midway, street vendors, street food, carnivals, snake pit, and even a butcher shop where you can try fresh rattlesnake. We're gonna take you with us as we explore Apache's Rattlesnake Festival for the first time. After checking out some of the vendors that the festival had to offer, it was now time to see what the snake pit was all about. This is definitely one of the main attractions to the festival. As neither of us had ever been to a rattlesnake festival or a snake pit, we had no idea what to expect. Snake pit. Can I come get a picture of the snake pit? Yeah. <laughs> so does it cost money to go to the snake pit? Yes, three dollars. Hi guys. Hi. Good size of timber right there. Thanks for coming out today. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. All right, well, this is the snake pit. We've got about 230 rattlesnakes in here, as well as a couple other different uh, species of snake that we'll talk about. Appreciate you guys coming and spending your Sunday here with us. What I've got in my hand here, and uh, what, I, yeah, what I got in my hand here is a, a western coach whip. So it kind of looks like the old bull whips they used to use out on the stage coaches. And y'all can touch it as I come around. It's not slimy, it's soft and smooth. Are you trying to give me a kiss? <laughs> Normally these snakes are pretty pretty friendly, pretty docile. We do get some in here occasionally that have kind of a bad attitude. There's one in here that bit one of the guys yesterday, so we don't mess with him anymore. Our venomous from non-venomous snakes from a distance, if you look at their head, these non-venomous snakes have a head that's roughly the same shape as the rest of their body. All of our venomous species are pit vipers, so they all have that triangular shaped head to them. So not everywhere in the world, but in Oklahoma, if you see a snake with a triangular shaped head, probably best just to leave that snake alone. And the one that uh, Tiffany's got in her hand here, that's a juvenile rat snake. 
I see you going to bed. Y'all probably found a few around your house before, which I know personally, uh, rat snakes are welcome to stay at my house. I like snakes a whole lot more than I like mice. Because never once have I wanted a late sn night snack, went to get some Doritos and found out that a snake chewed the corner and dropped all of them. Catch him? And that one right there in the floor is an adult rat snake. <laughs> We've got a few of these uh, cotton mouths or water moccasins in here. One thing that's important to note on, note on them, uh, most snakes will not chase you. Cotton mouths will definitely chase you. Um, they like to hang out in creeks, ponds, lakes, anywhere near fresh water. Uh, and if you are in their territory, they will do everything they can to get you out of their territory. There was a guy in here from uh, Louisiana yesterday that was telling me about how uh, one of these hopped up into his kayak with him. And I was like, well, that's me. Uh, that snake now owns the kayak because I'm not in the kayak anymore. Sucker just pulled the Captain Phillips on me and said, I am the captain now. It's kind of a mean, nasty snake to the cotton mouth. Uh, there's some baby rattlesnakes in here and also what we call our high strikers. So these are the ones that when they look at you, they look straight up in the air and try to strike at you at about the knees. So uh, they get to go in the timeout box. So you can imagine, they get on top of that pile and they can reach a little ways out there. Rattlesnakes will strike about half to a third of their body length. Wow. Now what we got here, this is a beautiful timber rattlesnake. This is probably my favorite venomous snake we have here in Oklahoma. Usually these are very, very docile snakes. You know, they're, they don't get super aggressive. They just kind of want to be left alone. They hang out in uh, eastern Oklahoma, out in the woods and the trees. It's a good thing that not very many people get bit by the snake because unlike our others, it has a, a neurotoxic venom. So that neurotoxic venom is going to attack your nervous system. You're going to have uncontrollable muscle spasms, issues breathing, stuff like that. Now, all the other snakes we have here in the pit are all western diamondback rattlesnakes that can be found right here in southwest Oklahoma. Now, uh, how many of y'all like to go hiking out at the wildlife refuge? So, you know, everybody knows there's rattlesnakes out there. Now, one of the things I want to tell you is exactly what you need to do is you come up on one out there. You know, hopefully first thing it's going to do is it's going to rattle. It's going to tell you, hey, I'm not here. Get away from me. Don't step on me. Now, these ones are not going to be very typical. They've been in here for four days now, so they're kind of over it. They're like, would you guys just go away? Um, but hopefully out there, they're going to rattle, tell you where they're at. These snakes are not going to chase you. They're going to do one of two things. They're either A, going to stand their ground, or B, they're going to back away from you. So all you got to do, listen for that rattle, find it, and just calmly walk another way, walk around it. Um, and everybody will be happy that day. <laughs> Me and Mike are going to show you the business end here. So those fangs are hollow, like a hypodermic needle, and if it were to bite you, it would inject, it would inject you with a hematoxic venom. And what a hematoxic venom is going to do is it's going to start to attack your red blood cells, which is going to start destroying the cell walls. It shreds the red blood cells, turns your blood about into the consistency of water, and they cause a lot of pain and a lot of swelling. Y'all can touch this end as you want. I'll keep the bad end over here so it can't get you. It's, it's got to bite me before it can bite you, and uh, I don't plan on getting bit today, so. A few interesting, interesting things about the rattles. The rattles are made out of the same thing your fingernails are made out of, which is keratin. They are hollow. So they've got fast twitch muscles that just 
shake those rattles against each other really fast. And then every time the snake sheds its skin, it's going to get a new button. <laughs> so if a snake eats really good one year, it might get two or three new buttons. If it doesn't eat very well, it might only get one. So you really can't ever tell how old the snake is based on the number of buttons. Because also they'll get uh, broken off, you know, on rocks and stuff like that. Uh, mice will actually chew them off in the den while they're hibernating. Now it is important to note the survival rate of a rattlesnake bite is pretty high. Not very many people die from getting bit by a rattlesnake, assuming that you can get to the hospital within a couple hours. Uh, now, you're not going to have a good time, and it's going to be expensive, but more than likely you're going to make it. If you're interested in seeing more of the snake pit and more of the education they provided, please check out our full video of the snake pit. The link for the video will be in the description below. Once we exited the snake pit area, we decided it was time to go check out the butcher shop which is another main attraction of the Rattlesnake Festival and also provides more education for people about rattlesnakes and snakes. And just like the snake pit, there was also more live demonstrations. They even had an 86 and a half inch rattlesnake on display, which would make this rattlesnake 7.2 feet long. Wowzers. If I move closer to that snake, that snake's probably still don't want to go move away from me, but it will probably strike, okay? okay? I can't stand right by that snake like I can a timber rattle. It's going to say, hey, I'm down here. It's in a striking pose. If I move really, really slow, okay, if you're out hiking and you come across one of these and you're standing right by it and you see that and you hear that, if I'm slowly moving away, I'm going to be fine. If I'm here and I make a sterile move at it, okay, chances are it's going to come in an aggressive move. There's a small hole right there. It won't get through it. This one's way too big. Okay? This snake right here probably scares more people than anybody. Right here. Rubber snake. We're going to have a little fun in here. Alright, so what you'll see here are the fangs of this western diamondback rattlesnake. They're just like hypodermic needles. Those fangs come in contact with you, it's going to pump a hematoxin into you that is a, basically a protein based venom that our body does not like. It's going to cause your blood to become very, very thin. It's not going to be able to clog. It's also going to cause blisters and going to cause swelling automatically. This part of the snake you guys can touch. Okay. The snake is very, very coarse. That rattle is nothing more than keratin. Same thing your fingers are made out of. Every time this snake shows the skin, a new button is formed. I like that snake, don't come. Most anywhere in Oklahoma, you'll come across this snake. But not all water snakes are cotton mouse water moxes. Most snakes you find in the water are just typical black water snakes. This snake will do just that, hang around and wait for you to bump into it or wait for you to go and swim close to it. Very, very territorial snake. Okay. This snake basically will do that. Will fall into the water or fall into your boat and now owns it. Very territorial. What I mean by that is if you're swimming or you're boating in this area, it wants you out. It will chase you out. Okay. 
And this snake, when it bites you, it will bite you multiple times usually because it, it's going to strike, strike, and strike. You notice the tongue? The tongue has a little yellow tip on it. It uses that tongue to get its prey. It, it baits its prey to get to it. It's not a very fast snake on the ground, but it's very, very deceiving. Okay? They get darker as the summer goes along. And a lot of times you smell these snakes way before you see them. We walk in this morning, I'm like, hey, there's a dead snake in the box. Open the box up, it was this guy. He was in his little cage and stuck to high head, man. It was nasty. This is a water moccasin cotton mouth. Hey, I'll pick them up if you want. Well, I think it maybe broke and another one took its place. This thing will never go without fangs. Oh, they'll regrow? There's a whole line of fangs back behind his mouth. A whole line of them just laying back here. Those are those bumps? Yeah, those are those bumps. So when those, when they lose one of those striking, another one immediately grows? Well, it's already there. It just it'll take a little while to fall back into place. Yeah, it's there. Oh, wow. It is there. Can you touch the tail of this one? A lot rougher. If you'd like to see more of what happened in the butcher shop and more of the education they provided, please check out the full video below in the description. To complete our Apache Rattlesnake Festival experience, we were off to find the freshly deep fried rattlesnake they had for purchase, which just happens to be deep fried in Sonic's onion ring batter. Next to the main stage, we found the food truck that served the fresh rattlesnake. And we ordered one snake meat to go. For $5, we would get some snake meat that was freshly butchered at the butcher shop that we just left. Upon picking up the snake meat, we were advised to watch out for bones, very similar to fish, she said. As this was our last stop in this rattlesnake festival, we decided to take the meat back to the truck and eat it before we departed. We All right, so hands are sanitized after touching a bunch of different snakes. Tara, Tara is about to try her first piece. Well. Sounds like it's deep fried in sonic onion ring batter. Which I just broke off there. There's bones everywhere. It's really hard to. Let's see. I never did that before, so. It's like eating a fish. Oh my god, it's so stringy. Oh, I don't know about this. Okay, here we go. Time to transition your face. <laughs> All right. I kind of like chicken, but not quite. I don't know how to explain it. Are you ready to try it? I'm ready to try it. I wouldn't say it's good, and I wouldn't say it's gross either. All right. It's kind of bland. Oh. I thought you had a piece broken off for me. No, it's, it's really tough, actually. Let's see here. Spilling it everywhere. I knocked all the batter off. I'm not doing a very good job of making this. The experience is not going to be as great. Here, I'll give you some batter. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Oops. 
rattlesnake. Hmm. Hmm. Kind of like chicken. Kind of a little bit tougher. Tougher. A little bit tougher. Um. No, I almost think frog when I eat it. Mm -hmm. Kind of like frog. Hmm. Well, there we go. We um supposedly. I had rattlesnake nachos at the Oklahoma City State Fair what, last year. Mm -hmm. um, this definitely is, is snake, for, for sure. There, who knows? I don't even know how you go about eating it. There we go. A rattlesnake <laughs> at the Rattlesnake Festival at Apache in Oklahoma. Yeah, it reminds me of fish. The Very, bones. lots and lots of bones. Hmm. Yeah.